happened in the world. Name's Raheem Flowers. And this is interesting news. I found this lead on the internet the other day off of a YouTube channel known as The Storyteller. Shout out to that brother. It's a British brother. And he was speaking about a reboot. Now, a lot of people's complaint is based upon the aesthetics that is being illustrated. But for me, it's more about how they're going to substantiate this season. How the topics are going to be able to move people. How it's going to resonate. Like, don't be like season four. Have a balance of both comic relief and something thought-provoking, you know? That's what Aaron McGrew needs to be on. He needs to be on what he was on for the first three seasons. Now, I'll be honest with you. Learning the things that I've learned about this world, I don't look at the boondocks just like I, how I don't look at most things the same anymore. And that's just because I think about the fact that Huey Freeman, as even Aaron McGrew has stated, is basically how he's living through Huey Freeman, or Huey Freeman is living through Aaron, however it goes, but it's a vicarious thought process, and that thought process is, you know, would be that leftist or liberal pro-black views. Now, I'll say this about Aaron. The brother is consistent in the thought process, which is why I wouldn't write him off as a pseudo-neo-pro-black, because it's clear that the man means what he says, but I do raise eyebrows when you allow that fuck shit to go on in season four. In addition to that, when you work with dudes like Corey Holcomb and the Black Jesus, and I'm not discrediting Black Jesus because it did seem like a decent series. I've never watched the whole episode, but I've seen clips and, you know, pieces. I mean, look, everybody's getting on Aaron McGruder, like, oh man, why does he look so much like an anime character? It just doesn't seem what the Boondocks do. The Boondocks has been heavily influenced by anime. If you want to be specific and you want to get into the particulars of it, it's shows like Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Great animes, by the way. But point is, the, the, the illustration, the aesthetics, the artwork is the least of my worries. Just so long as there's great comic relief and great introspection, something thought-provoking, the food for thoughts that Aaron has been well known for. But again, like I said, he leans towards a lot of those liberal pro-black views. He does it in a more unique way, and like I said, he's consistent about it, but I've seen it, and I even think about the fact that Gary Anthony Williams, the dude who plays Uncle Ruckus, he's getting on the breakfast coons and doing little jokes, and then, you know, they have, like, a live adaptation of Uncle Ruckus, but it's, like, it's ironic because Uncle Ruckus is busy out here calling people coons, but he's one of the biggest ones. Yes, you could look at him as a lovable coon. Yeah, I've laughed at a lot of things Uncle Ruckus said, and sadly, a lot of things that he said about many sisters out here, many black women, had certain degrees of truth in it during season three when granddad of Robert Freeman, who was played by John Witherspoon, was had dated a black woman and got really intimate with her. Her name was Ebony. And... You know, there was certain sets of truths. I do remember when they, in the comment section, they were roasting the shit out of Tommy Sotomayor saying, this is like, this must be like the fat version. This must be like the fat old version of Tommy Sotomayor. And it was, it was kind of fun. No, it was funny as fuck. But it was like, damn. You know? But anywho, like, come on, dude. When you constantly have been promoting a dude who 
obviously and ironically it's supposed to show the self-hating coolness side of many black people you're really showing that I'm not going to say you're showing signs of irresponsibility but like I said you got to have that balance I'm cool with Uncle Ruckus having that comic relief and that sat those satirical moments but come on man But yeah, I've seen little comic strips, and you know, goofies like Charlemagne the Coon, Charlemagne the Sambo, Charlemagne the Pansexual, showing it off, and that was the lead that I got initially from it. But yeah. Once you learn the things that you learn about black people, you realize that even Aaron McGruder had ways to go. Unless he's telling, he's showing us things and he's not telling everything. You can look at it like that too. But uh, I don't even think that's the case. But yeah, this is an interesting read. I don't got too much to say on it. I guess the boondocks and the three characters and some it was an interesting perspective though to end it off on this note it was supposed to be like i guess a black trinity or i guess even argue like a nigger trinity because somebody's like you like they all represented um forms of slaves or something like that one is the sambo which is uncle ruckus one is the one who's in a criminality, which is Riley. One is the revolutionary, which is Huey. And one is the complacent one, which was Robert Freeman. Something to that effect. And that is a good way to look at it too, though. But I need they need to add in Michael Caesar. I almost forgot about that. Cause they didn't do that in season four when it, with that huge mess known as season four. They need to add Michael Caesar in this reboot because he had a huge impact on the comic strips like Public Enemy number two and A Right to Be Hostile. And you know, that was Huey's good friend. So they need to add him on to the series, to the list. I'm gone. Peace.